the Crawford Prize for 2022 in Geosciences of 6 million Swedish kroner is awarded to Andrew Knoll. The citation reads, for fundamental contributions to our understanding of the first three billion years of life on Earth and life's interactions with the physical environment through time. Andy Knoll is worth the prize because he has done amazing things with understanding the functioning of the Earth through geologic time. Andy Knoll is best known for his contribution to paleontology and geobiology. By analyzing the oldest microscopic fossils on Earth, he has been able to answer major questions concerning the evolution of life. Andrew Knoll began his work at Harvard University in the 1970s. He studied ancient samples from the ocean floor and developed a way to interpret early fossils by integrating all available data, geological, biological, and chemical. By doing this, he was able to shed new light on the early history of life on Earth, a history that began with a barren planet. But in the oceans, through photosynthesis, cyanobacteria released oxygen and locked away carbon as they were buried in the ocean floor. Then, as Andrew Knoll describes, multicellular algae increased dramatically, speeding up the release of oxygen. Now followed the Cambrian explosion, where organisms diversified very quickly. Thereafter, life spread on to land, turning Earth green. Oxygen releasing photosynthesis is important, even necessary for multicellular life to exist. And Landonol has invested this process and its interaction with life and environment through deep time. And Andy has done this in a truly multidisciplinary way. He's a Renaissance man. In museums all over the world, fossil records show the abundance of species which were living 300 million years ago. But all this was about to change with the awakening of gigantic volcanoes in Siberia. The eruptions were enormous and spewed out carbon dioxide for a million years. And as Andrew Knoll has shown, organisms died in hypercapnia, lethal levels of carbon dioxide in their bodies. The oceans became acidic and the greenhouse effect warmed the planet until frozen methane gas was released, accelerating the heating, setting off enormous fires. In all, more than 90% of all species died. For example, all trilobites went extinct in what is now known as the Permian-Triassic extinction event, the third mass extinction and the biggest so far. And in all, did groundbreaking work on this mass extinction. And by studying animals before and after this mass extinction event, he could actually show that carbon dioxide was the driving force behind this catastrophe. But Andrew Knoll would also describe how life keeps coming back in new forms. After the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, he could show that the oceans once again had started a transformation of our planet. This time, it was the eukaryote plankton which became abundant, and they removed carbon dioxide during their growth. And when the greenhouse gas diminished over millions of years, the planet could cool and once again allow plants to thrive and life to diversify. Andy Knoll has changed what we know about how the Earth functions, describing all these big evolutionary steps. He has increased our understanding of the Earth thanks to his fantastic research. People always talk about once-in-a-lifetime experiences, but I think this one actually qualifies. <laughs> so I was making my lunch when the phone rang, my wife answered it, and then she 
comes to me with a puzzled look and says, there's someone who says they're from Stockholm. I don't think my feet have hit the floor since then. It, it's early days and I'm still getting used to the idea of the prize and haven't thought a great deal about how I'll use the funds. But I will say, you know, at this stage of my life, the funds, however welcome, won't change my life. So my thoughts are really turning to how I can use some of this funding to help others, including both scientists and those whose principal concerns are for feeding their children. The Crawford Prize is awarded in partnership between the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and the Crawford Foundation in Lund. The Academy is responsible for selecting the Crawford laureates.